First of all, let me just say that I'm excited that you're tracking with these studies. Let these little studies push you beyond the questions. Take this further, deeper, beyond the surface. Let God use this as a launching point to turn over some soil in your heart. That might be different for you than it is for me, but let God dig around a bit and then deal with what he digs up, would you? And this week, we've added some daily devotional content. Did you get those? Jump into those too. They will bring up the same spiritual dis discipleship issues again from different perspectives. It's all kind of repetitive, yeah. And consecration, faith, stewardship, commitment, sacrifice, thanksgiving, they're all key elements in walking the way of Jesus. Let's jump into these things with both feet. If you're not at church on Sundays, watch the video of the services because they lead into these videos and the corresponding pamphlet. Do these together with a few others. Now, add the daily devotional material. They're only about five minutes. And when we get this all together, let's come to God with open hearts, with open minds, with open hands. All right, let's pick up where we left off last Sunday. Joseph. Joseph was sold by his brothers. What an evil, despicable, deceitful, selfish way to solve their problem. Once that whole incredible story is done, and Joseph is looking back on it, dealing with his brothers, he says in chapter 50 of Genesis, verse 20, You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Have you ever explored or wondered what good? Why? What's God's point in all of this? I can tell you it wasn't just about the good for their family. It wasn't good for you. It wasn't good for me. Keep reading because we stopped in the middle of the sentence. Genesis 50 chapter, verse 20 says, To bring about that many people should be saved. The NIV says, The saving of many lives. I believe this is the heart of God. I believe that this is the heart of this story. The entire Bible is the story of God's rescue mission. We see it on every page. If you're looking at the pamphlet for this week, you'll see very soon that it will take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Will you grab your Bible and go there now? In this chapter, chapter 9, uh, Paul's talking about living his life by God's agenda, not his own. That's a huge deal. To put his own aspirations and dreams aside and live his life completely surrendered to God's agenda. He's living on purpose. He goes as far as to say in this chapter that he surrenders all his personal rights. Wow, are you ready for that? He says, I surrender all my own rewards. Am I ready for that? He calls this living the life of stewardship in verse 17. Then look here. Here's why. Here's the motivation. Starting at verse 19. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, not myself being under the law, but I, I, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessing. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Wait, share with who? All of this that I might share with them? Who's them? People who don't know Jesus. He does it all, like Joseph, so many people would be saved. Paul says, I do it all for the sake of people who do not yet know Christ as Lord and Savior. This is what our campaign, Forward Together, is all about. As we follow Christ well, as we step into our spiritual journey with new vigor, we will change. Our church will change. And as we build onto our church, why? Why? So we have a more comfortable place? So we can say, look what we did. So it's good for me? So it's good for my family? So it's good for you? No. It's for one reason. Same as Paul. It's all about many people should be saved. That's the bottom line. 
And if that doesn't happen, we fail as a church. In the Apostle Paul, I see an undying obedience. I see unwavering commitment to the cause of Christ, considering it far more valuable pursuit than that of his own life. This scripture is a great description of the Apostle Paul's commitment level. But commitment to what? To the saving truth of Jesus, of Jesus' rescue mission, of God's love and salvation, of which he experienced it himself in a crazy way. Saved from his self and sin, his own agenda, his own direction, his opposition to God, and saved to God's love, God's purpose, and God's cause to make disciples. So keep reading, same breath, verse 23. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives a prize? So run that you may obtain it. Let every athlete exercise his self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So, I do not run aimlessly. I don't box as one beating the air. I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. For Paul, nothing was aimless. Nothing was accidental. Everything was deliberate, uh, disciplined, obedience, to the pursuit of Christ. That is commitment. All right, before I let you go into your group study, let's check this with what Jesus himself said. Go to Matthew chapter 16, read verse 24 and 26. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? For what will a man give in return for his soul? What was first on Jesus' agenda? The saving of souls. And here, here you go in this passage, what was the cost of that? Everything. Are we ready to live by his agenda? And to do whatever it takes short of sin to seek and align with what he's asking. I said last Sunday, don't give a penny that he doesn't ask you to give. Are we willing to honestly seek his heart in this whole thing? And then, then ask about what our part is in doing that? I think it's the only way we'll accomplish anything. Commitment to obedience. Listen to what God says and do it. Accountable only to God. For what's involved. As I said on Sunday, Psalm 37 5, commit your ways to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. I can't wait to see what God does as we commit our ways to Him wholeheartedly. Are we good? One take?